Hello everyone. My name is Jay Bhatti, an R&D tax specialist at MHA. Following Rishi Sunak's budget announcement on Wednesday, I thought I'd share a couple of thoughts with you on R&D as there was more content on R&D as than expected. Just to give you a bit of context on what we were expecting uh, to be announced in the budget, the R&D tax relief schemes have undergone two major consultations by, for, by HMRC, where we have participated to give them feedback on real world examples and give them essentially um, um, really rich content. So the first consultation dealt with what, do, what does the modern R&D tax relief look like in terms of costs? So that specifically focused on software claims where, uh, for example, if you are a, um, a modern software developer, it's not uncommon for you to pay quite a bit of, uh, uh, to, to pay quite a bit for acquiring data or paying for cloud services. Uh, essentially, as the R&D tax reliefs currently stand, they legally don't have a mechanism to account for that. So it was great to hear on Wednesday Rishi uh, announcing the fact that the R&D the tax relief schemes in the UK will be expanded to account for those kind of costs. The issue that we have, though, is it's kind of late. Um, yeah, so it is really great that it's going to come through, although it's going to come through from uh, the, the Envision time frame is around uh, April 2023 onwards. Um, the issue is that in the real world, the, the industry has already gone through a cloud revolution. Uh, the, the digital cloud revolution happened almost five years ago where a large, not just the blue chip companies, but a large majority of really innovative SMEs made that big push towards the cloud. And since then, there have been two, I would say two or three other really big uh, technological waves where different technologies have been developed using the cloud. And it would have been really useful for the schemes to have been expanded sooner because these companies would have been able to take advantage of claiming for that kind of um, uh, cost. Um, given that it's coming through in 2023, I would imagine that Maybe some companies that have really substantial data costs, they would maintain that uh, or, or maybe might delay some costs until then. But who knows? It's a trade-off. Uh, so that's the most certain aspect of the announcement from Wednesday. The less certain or uh, rather open-ended announcement was uh, the potential for the R&D schemes in the UK being limited um, for um, companies being able to claim for R&D being conducted abroad. Um, my colleagues and I looked deeper into this and essentially the Treasury cites the French, Australian schemes or Canadian schemes as an example where basically um, only the national level uh, costs can be claimed and the international elements cannot be claimed. Um, personally, I feel that it, it, it contradicts with the, with the goals of the government. You know, the, the government have a couple of slogans or phrases um, flying around at the moment, one of them being a global Britain, secondly being that we should be a knowledge-based economy, and thirdly, being that, you know, we should be a science superpower. The issue is that the UK, the, the ability for UK entities to claim for international costs make the UK R&D tax relief schemes that much more competitive compared to France and Australia. Uh, France and Australia stifle their development. And we have actually seen companies move their R&D to the UK because of this capability. Um, it's not uncommon for us to encounter SMEs, uh, you know, with reference to, to a knowledge-based economy. It's not uncommon to encounter SMEs that do a lot of development and problem-solving in the UK. 
So a lot of the analysis and thought process happens in the UK, but maybe if they're developing a product or it might even just be software, a lot of that development happens abroad. However, the UK entity is still the one incurring the, te the technological and financial risk. Now, interestingly enough, um, we sit on the board of uh, the RDCC, which is the R&D Consultative Committee. It's a forum where the industry talks to HMRC about the R&D schemes. Um, and right after the budget announcement, we did get an email from uh, them to say, well, don't panic, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, um, that they will hold a forum very soon to disclose and discuss in detail with us on what that, what that limitation of international R&D costs actually might look like, um, or rather what they have in mind. So it's very much in the concept stage at the moment. But um, given the amount of R&D claims that we do in specialist sectors and how much these companies rely on an R&D relief, because these companies, what an, an R&D relief isn't just giving money back to a company, it's creating a virtuous cycle of value because a lot of SMEs that we see, especially SMEs, they have an innovation, they go through blood, sweat and tears to create it, realize it. Uh, even if it might, might, might not be successful, they claim R&D tax relief on it, they get cash for that and then they almost always reinvest it, either in terms of jobs or further uh, problem solving or patent development. So it's, it's, the issue is that for us at least, the announcements on limiting the R&D tax relief further contradicts the whole concept of making the, making, making the UK a R&D superhouse, a uh, superpower, basically. Um, and uh, the only thing I would say is we're not panicking. I don't think there's any use in that, but we will definitely very strongly give evidence-based feedback to HMRC and the Treasury, showing them um, that it's the further they restrict the R&D tax relief, the more it defeats the purpose. Um, I'm optimistic about the future because history has shown that the only way to, the only way to come out of a recession or a massive, massive um, disruption to the economy, like a pandemic, is through innovation. Every time a massive disruption like this happens, human beings are wonderful. We come up with amazing ideas on problem solving and that creates new ways of working. It creates new solutions, and we can innovate our way out of this. So I don't think a centrally centralization and further administration is something that is particularly helpful in that process. I think trusting people, enabling them, empowering them, and then the role of government is to sit at the back and give them that push for example, to the R&D tax relief scheme, that is what a healthy relationship looks like. Um, but yeah, uh, we will be releasing more information in, uh, in the near future. If, um, if you'd like some more specifics on R&D tax reliefs or any other tax matters for that matter, please feel free to visit the MHA website. And thank you very much.